Greg here at AEMC Instruments. I'm here in Dover, New Hampshire at our corporate headquarters. And today we're going to do a simplified fall of potential measurement using the AEMC model 6424. Today we're going to be performing a simplified fall of potential measurement. Now the simplified fall of potential measurement requires us to be 10 times the length of the driven electrode in the earth. Right now I'm dealing with a rod that has been installed into the earth 10 feet. So I'm going to place my H electrode 10 times or 100 feet away from that rod. I'm then going to take measurements using our S electrode or potential electrode at 52, 62 and 72 percent or 52, 62 and 72 feet of my H electrode spacing. This is going to allow me to not only establish the effective system resistance, but also verify that my measurement is accurate by checking the deviation percentage of my three measurements. As long as that is less than 5%, I have a good measurement. Now, the great thing about the AEMC Model 6424 is it does all the hard work for me, and it calculates that deviation and averages my midpoint measurements automatically. The AEMC Model 6424 is a USB chargeable 600 volt CAT4 rated instrument. This instrument can perform not only ground resistance test measurements, but can also perform continuity or point to point measurements. I also have some basic multimeter functions with this instrument, voltage and current, and it even has a current measurement probe that's optional that can be added to the instrument. The Model 6424 ships in either a 150 or 300 foot reel kit and includes all the accessories you'll need to be able to perform ground resistance testing. We've got our electrodes as part of the kit, as well as all of our connections for our reels. Before you begin ground resistance testing, it's important to note that you disconnect and de-energize, isolate your ground systems before you put them under test. We don't want anything else to artificially influence our measurement. We wanna ensure that we're measuring just the resistance of our ground rod. This ground rod has been driven for demonstration purposes, and so it's already been isolated. I've run my tape measure out 100 feet. Next, I'm going to install my H electrode out at the same distance. That's 10 times the length of my ground rod. I'm gonna bring that back to my instrument and make the connection. To make your job easier in the field, AEMC includes a reel spindle with all of our reel accessory kits. This simply snaps into the reel and then can be released using the release mechanism. Now that I've installed my H electrode, the S electrode is next. We're going to start at 52%. Keep in mind that simplified fall potential requires three measurements, 52, 62, and 72%. I like to start close by. So we're gonna start at 52, go to 62, and take our last measurement at 72%. I wanna keep my leads about 18 inches or so apart from each other. I just wanna prevent them from laying on top uh, of one another so they don't have any uh, interference on the measurement. Now that I've installed my auxiliary electrodes for my test, I'm going to make a connection to the ground rod that is going to be under test, snapping the Mueller clip to it, and making a connection to my instruments. The last thing I need to do is interconnect my reels to my instrument. E and or green is going to connect to the ground system that's under test. Blue is going to connect my potential electrode and red is going to connect my current injection electrode. Boot my instrument up and I'm ready to start taking measurements. So I'm gonna turn the instrument on by pressing and holding the green on button. The instrument automatically boots up in two pole mode. So I'm taking a measurement from H to E right now. This would be that continuity or point to point testing. To start a ground resistance or three pole test, I'm going to press the test button and it will flash amber, then light up green when the test locks in. Now that I've completed my first measurement at 52% or 52 feet here, because I'm out only at 100 feet, I'm gonna press and lock in this measurement into the instrument on the 52% button. Now that I've pressed that, the instrument has stored the measurement result down here and the 52%. This allows me to store all three measurements and then the instrument will automatically calculate everything at the end. Next, I'm going to take a measurement at 62 feet I'm gonna press and hold the test button, let it start. It flashes amber during the measurement and lights up green when the test is done. 
And again, just like I did with 52, I'm gonna press the 62% button that stores my measurement in that slot temporarily. Last, we're going to take our final measurement at 72 feet. We'll start our final measurement. And we'll store the measurement under 72%. Now that we have completed all three measurements, I have several pieces of information on my screen I wanna make note of. First off, I have an average resistance of all three measurements. This is going to be my effective system resistance for my electrode under test. Also, I have a deviation percentage of my measurements. This needs to be below 5% for the fall of potential method to be accurate. If your deviation percentage is greater than 5%, simply move out your H electrode, recalculate your S electrode distances, and repeat the test. This concludes the simplified fall of potential test. I've taken my three measurements, I've verified the accuracy by checking the deviation, and I've calculated my system resistance for my driven ground rod. If you have any other suggestions for AEMC videos, we'd love to hear them please send us an email or contact us via our website. Thanks for watching our demonstration on simplified follow potential. Measure up with AEMC instruments.